Hi, welcome to another video in my tutorials on using Newton's second law of motion. That's force equals mass times acceleration. Now, what we've got here is a sledge. We've got a sledge of mass 6 kilograms is pulled at a constant speed up a slope inclined at 30 degrees to the horizontal by a rope inclined at 25 degrees to the slope. And if the resistance from the icy slope is 1 newton, modelling the sledge as a particle, find the tension in the rope and the normal contact force. Now, I've got here part of the sketch of the diagram, just to give you some idea. But we need to add to it. So, here's our rope pulling our sledge of mass 6 kilograms up the slope and you can see the rope is inclined at 25 degrees to the slope and the inclination of the slope is 30 degrees. Now whenever you get uh, a tension in a rope one of the standard letters to use is T for tension so I'm going to mark this in then as T for tension, T newtons. Now what other forces will we have on this? Well we've always got the weight of the objects and that's going to act downwards so we we'll mark that in there have that as the weight which is mg the mass times acceleration due to gravity the mass is 6 kilograms so we can have that as 6g I'm going to use g as 9.8 meters per second per second throughout the problem when we get to do calculations any other forces acting on this particle well, we've got the normal contact force, which we've got to find in this problem. That's going to be at right angles to the surface. So we've got a reaction here, and I'm going to call that R for reaction. And don't forget the units again, Newtons. And because the sledge wants to move up the plane, there's this resistance from the icy slope of 1 Newton and that's going to act against the motion, so it's going to act down the plane. Mark that in as 1 Newton. And we're assuming that this is a particle. We're modelling it, the sledge, as a particle. So all forces come from this one single point here. Now when you consider motion on a plane I would always suggest to you that you draw a line, a dotted line if you like, back down here, perpendicular to the plane and you've got one parallel to the plane. And the reason for that is that you should always mark in this angle from the vertical to this dotted line. This angle will always be the angle of the plane. And this is 30 degrees. Now to solve this problem, to get the tension in the rope and this normal contact force, what we've got to do is consider resolving. Resolving, we we'll use the letter R here, in a direction parallel to the slope. Now this sledge is going to want to move up the slope, but we're told that it moves at a constant speed, so therefore because it's going at a constant speed, the acceleration, because it's not gathering speed, is going to be 0 meters per second per second. So by doing that, that's showing me that it's moving at a steady speed up the slope. You could put it in a, a V if you like, V for velocity, V meters per second, that's up to you. But it does show me that it's moving but it's not accelerating, going at a constant speed. Okay, so always resolve in the direction of motion and that sledge is moving up the slope so we need to resolve in the direction of motion up the slope. So put an arrow parallel to slope, up the slope being positive. Now we're looking at the overall force acting on the particle up the slope. And what's that going to be? Well, we've got part of the T Newtons acting 
up the slope. You notice the T Newton force is not on this dotted line, so we need to split it into two components. In, and in my earlier tutorials, I tried to show you how we split this into components. And if you're not sure, just go to the link that is at the bottom of this video if you're looking at it on my website and you'll see resolving forces or just go on my website and look on the index under resolving forces. So how much of T Newtons acts up the slope? Well we've got an angle of 25 degrees here and it's contained between the force and the direction we want to resolve in. And I showed you earlier that when it contains the angle it's cosine. So it's going to be T cosine or cos for short of 25 degrees. That's how much of T acts up the slope. The R doesn't have any effect up the slope. Why? Because it's perpendicular, perpendicular to the line that we're resolving in. So there's no effect from the R Newtons there. The 1 Newton force all of it acts along the slope, but in the opposite direction to the way we're resolving. So this is going to be negative, negative 1 Newton. So we'll put minus 1 there. And now we have the weight here. Some of this weight acts down the slope. We can split the weight into two components, one down the slope and one into the slope. We're only interested in the one down the slope. And because we've got this right angle in here, where we've got this 30 degrees here, I know this angle is 60 degrees, but still using the 30 degrees, because this angle here doesn't contain the 30 degrees, then the component down the slope will be the sine of 30, 6g sine 30, as I pointed out in my tutorials on splitting a force into two components. So we've got down the slope the force coming from the weight here is minus 6g sine 30 degrees. Now that is the resultant force then acting up the slope. And that resultant force would normally equal mass times acceleration if we're using Newton's second law. But because this is going at a constant speed up the slope, there is no acceleration. So the mass of 6 times the acceleration, 6 times 0, would give us 0. We've basically got no overall resultant force acting up the slope. All we need to do now is just rearrange this then for t by adding 6g sine 30 and 1 to both sides and then dividing by the cosine of 25. So t is equal to 6g sine 30 degrees plus 1 and that's all divided by the cosine of 25 degrees. Just work that out in your calculator and make sure your calculator is in degrees mode just in case you happen to have put it in radians mode in the past okay or in, in any other mode but if you do that calculation you should find you get 33.542 and so on and if we round this say to one decimal place we're going to have 33.5 newtons to one decimal place one dp so I hope you've got that idea there now Finally, we've got to find the normal contact force. That's this R Newtons here. And to do that, what we need to do is resolve perpendicular to the plane. And it's good to choose away from the plane as being positive. So we're going to look at how much force acts perpendicular to the plane. And we'll start with the R Newtons, that's in the positive sense. And all of that acts perpendicular to the plane, so that's going to be R. If we move around to the 1 Newton, you'll notice that this is at right angles to the perpendicular direction, 
of the plane. So the one Newton force has no effect in this direction. Now we come on to the weight here, 6 G Newtons. And you'll see that this is not perpendicular to the plane, so we can split this into two components. As we've seen before, one down the plane and one into the plane. We're only interested in the one into the plane now. It contains the angle of 30 degrees, so it's going to be cosine of 30 degrees. So this component will be 6g cos 30 degrees. That's the force pushing in to the plane coming from the weight and it's acting in the opposite sense to the arrow here so it's going to be minus. Finally we move on to the tension here T newtons. We know that it's got a magnitude of 33.542 and so on newtons but we see that it's inclined to the plane and we're looking for the component of T Newtons that acts perpendicular to the plane in this direction, this upward direction away from the plane. How much of that T Newtons acts in this direction? Well, we've got our 25 degrees here, and this is a right angle. So this angle in here excludes the 25 degrees, so it's going to be sine of 25 degrees. T sine 25, T sine 25. And that component of the force acts in this direction in the positive sense. So that will be a plus. Now that's the resultant force perpendicular to the plane. And because it's not accelerating, it's not gaining speed perpendicular to the plane, that acceleration is going to be zero. So you could argue 6 times 0 is 0. Or we could argue that the resultant force here is 0 because it's in what we call relative equilibrium. It doesn't move off the plane or go into the plane. Anyway, there's our equation. All we need to do is work this out so that we can get the R. So if we work out minus 6g cos 30 plus t sine 25, remember t is the 33.542 and so on. Do use that value. If you do that, you should find that you get minus 36.746 and so on. And that equals 0. And if we rearrange that, then r is going to equal 36.7 newtons if we round it up to say one decimal place one dp okay well i hope that's given you an idea then of how we can handle problems like this that are moving with a constant speed where there's no acceleration okay well that brings us now to the end then of this tutorial